Let's turn over to Europe because the UK Prime Minister Theresa May is under sustained pressure over her Brexit deal. Members of her own backbench are calling the deal unacceptable, while European leaders are warning there will be no further concessions. Well, the Prime Minister says she will not get a better Brexit deal from the European Union if the current plan is rejected by the British Parliament. Let's get more. We're talking with Professor Mark Steers, Director of the Sydney Policy Lab at the University of Sydney. Mark, welcome. Good, Good morning. morning. Now, this time last week, it looked as though um, Theresa May's prospects were very bleak. How has she survived the week? Yeah, no, it was. I mean, I was glued to Twitter all last week because you thought she was going to go any minute. You know, yeah. Cabinet Minister's resigning left, right and centre. I mean, I think what's happened is that she's, she's got a plan. Uh, she's got her deal. She's absolutely clear that she's not going to try and negotiate another one. Uh, and she's just going to push ahead. And that's her style. Uh, and also her, her opponents are in, in, in a little bit of chaos because they haven't got an alternative. So, you know, she's got her thing. She's going to keep on pushing ahead. So that's her strategy in the face of so much opposition from particularly from within her own parliament. Mm. She's defiant. What has that strategy working for her? I mean, I think... Uh, Boredom is her best strategy at the moment. Like the British public are bored sick right. of this. It's been going on for ages and ages and ages. And there's been so much opposition, left, right, centre, wherever. She is just trying to sort of stick it out in the hope that at least when the vote comes, or perhaps when a second vote comes, if it gets voted down the first time, she's, she might bring it back to the Houses of Parliament again. Uh, I think she just thinks, well, perhaps everybody will just be so bored of this, they'll go with my thing because it's the only game in town. I mean, you say bored, yet at the same time, are the British public thinking, hang on, we know so much more now about the consequences of Brexit. Should it go back to another referendum? Yeah, so there's definitely growing demand from those people who would prefer to stay in the European Union anyway for a second referendum. So th those people who voted to remain the first time round, some of whom had probably thought, OK, well, we've lost, it's all over. Now they're getting you know, a, a, got a second wind. You know, and there are almost a million people demonstrating on the streets of London a few weeks ago. And there are definitely more MPs, especially Labour MPs, coming out in favour of a second referendum. So there's a kind of growing part of society demanding that. But it's probably only still sort of 30 to 40 percent of the population uh, who are looking for that, that second referendum. And that at the moment is probably not quite enough to get it back on the table properly. And if those calls continue to grow and we do see a second referendum, is it likely or is it the expectation that there would be a different result? I mean, again, the polls, which you know have been unreliable before, but the, the polls basically show a small shift back in favour of remaining in the EU. So the last, the biggest poll has about 54 percent of people saying, well, OK, actually, we probably should have stayed all along but it's not a huge shift mm. essentially the country's in the same place as it was you know a couple of years ago when it voted the first time mm. okay mark let's look at the possibilities then if theresa may does not get it through parliament mm. what's the next course of action I mean, almost anything could happen and i think that mm. nobody has ever seen this in british politics before that you have absolutely no idea so Three big possibilities if she fails, one of which is that the UK crashes out of the EU without a deal, which would be utter chaos and devastation. Another is that there's a general election, uh, and at the moment the suggestion is that would probably just about bring the Labour Party to power, and it would try and negotiate another deal, although against a ticking clock. And that third option is, well, she'll just say, hold on a minute, this is a total mess, we have to go back to the public, you know, put her, her deal versus remaining in the EU to a second referendum. But time's running out. It's ticking away, and that's the remarkable thing. Mm. I mean, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, suggests the EU would extend the negotiating period if there was an election and a new Prime Minister. That's a possibility. Sadiq Khan, the London Mayor, says the EU will extend the negotiating period if there's a second referendum. That's a possibility. Mm. But it's equally a possibility that the EU will say, we've had enough of this, it's, you know, it's slowing everything down for us, uh, the date's the date, and, and the UK just crashes out in you know, really horrific circumstances uh, next year. It's interesting because it seems as though the biggest task for Theresa May is getting it past her own parliament right. rather than the EU, who she's actually negotiating with and making a deal with. Yeah, yeah, she's got about you know, just over 300 MPs. 85 of them at the moment say they won't vote for her deal. You know, that's a big chunk of her own party saying they're not having it. Some of those people might come round if public opinion switches. So, you know, she might get another, say, 20 of those back in her column. Uh, but that's still not enough to get it through the Commons without significant support from the Labour Party. Uh, and they want to pressurise her into getting a general election. So it's unlikely that they're going to vote to bail her out either. Professor, thanks so much for coming in and trying to unpack all that for us. <laughs> a great pleasure. Thank you very much.